All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of chem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again today. This is episode seven, the symbols of the New Grange curbstone. And I am very excited to be making this video finally. If you think that the information that I have presented thus far is interesting, just wait. Um, today, we're gonna be jumping ahead to the final chapter of the land of chem. And this is where the mystery surrounding these ancient structures truly begins to unravel. It's very exciting stuff. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And just a quick reminder that limited first edition print copies of The Land of Chem are now available on my website, which is www.thelandofchem.com. If you'd like to visit the website, you can pick up your copy today. And I truly hope that you all enjoy reading the story as much as I enjoyed writing it. So thank you so much in advance. All right, the topic for today's video, the symbols of the New Grange curbstone. For those of you that are unfamiliar with this location, this is an aerial view of the New Grange site, which is located in County Meath, Ireland. Now, when evaluating the ancient passage chamber structures of Ireland, as with the Egyptian pyramids, it is my belief that these structures were not originally intended as burials. Now, I am well aware, and I want to go ahead and get this out of the way, I'm well aware that cremated remains have been found within this structure. So yes, I do know that those cremated remains were found in the excavation of the site. That being said, I find it extremely counterintuitive that an ancient civilization was simultaneously practicing both ritualistic burial and cremation, right? If you're a civilization, you're either going to do one of those two things. You either bury your dead or you cremate them. You do not do both of those things. So again, I found it a little counterintuitive that just because they found cremated remains inside the structure that that automatically means that it was originally intended as a burial. And again, as with the Egyptian pyramids, I do not believe that this was the original intention of these structures. And I do believe that their true purpose is connected to the science of chemistry. So you may be asking yourself, how could a structure like this possibly be producing chemicals, right? With the Egyptian pyramids, they have very intricate internal configurations and all of these very interesting components. Um, but these passage chamber structures of Ireland and they're actually located all across Europe, Ireland, Scotland, England, um, on the western coasts of you know, Spain, Portugal, um, all across Europe. Um, these are very, very interesting structures that actually predate the Egyptian pyramids. And I do believe, again, that these are connected to the science of chemistry. And I will get to how these structures operated here in just a moment. I, on this slide, this is just a couple of pictures of me from my 2018 research expedition to Ireland. Uh, here on the left, this is me standing out in front of Newgrange, and here on the right, I am inside one of the passage chamber structures at Carrowkeel in County Sligo, which is on the western coast of Ireland. So I went to Egypt for my first trip in 2017. I stumbled across this uh, crazy idea that somehow the Egyptian pyramids were connected to the science of chemistry. So I returned home and I began researching all of the ancient structures across the planet, not just the Egyptian pyramids, but the passage chamber structures of Ireland, some of the ancient structures of South America and Mexico, um, also some structures in Japan, China, in the Middle East and in India. Um, so again, I began to evaluate all of these structures as related to the science of chemistry. And I knew that these were not isolated structures, that all of these um, different structures were indeed connected. And I knew that the passage chamber mounds, the passage chamber structures of Ireland were also connected to the science of chemistry. So I started investigating these structures and um, I realized very quickly that for me to be able to fully understand how these things operated, that I had to go to Ireland and see them in person. So we started off the trip uh, arrived into the port town of Drogheda on the eastern coast of Ireland, picked up a rental car from the airport, and then basically did a self-guided tour around Ireland where I was driving around the rental car and basically manned this operation uh, during this research expedition. So on the first day, we went to Newgrange, Noth, and Douth. 
did tours of all three of those structures, which were all guided tours. You can't visit those structures alone. And on the second day, we took the rental car over to go see two sites called Four Knox and Low Crew, which uh, those sites you can actually visit by yourself. There is no guide. You basically just pull up to a side of a mountain, hike up a cliff, and then you get to the structure at the top of the hill. And it's really, really amazing to be able to visit these sites independently, kind of without a guide and without a tour group, and just kind of have free range of the site to be able to really evaluate the structures. So after that, got in the rental car and drove from the eastern coast of Ireland to the western coast um, to go visit again Carrow Keel in County Sligo. And again, I knew that these structures were connected to the science of chemistry. And I had a hypothesis as to how these structures operated. And it wasn't until several months after I returned from Ireland that I finally put all the pieces together. But traveling to Ireland enabled me to write the final chapter of the story, incorporate my personal experience visiting Ireland into the narrative of the story, which again, kind of helps me encapsulate the theories regarding these structures within the fictional narrative. Um, so again, I was able to write the final chapter of the story. And several months later, I finally stumbled across a discovery that allowed me to put all the pieces together and figure out how these structures operated. But I knew that they were connected to the science of chemistry. And one thing particular that I wanted to see in person when I went to Ireland were the symbols on the Newgrange curbstone. I knew exactly what these things were. I knew what they were indicating. And again, um, it's a really, really amazing discovery to be able to finally, in my opinion, interpret the true meaning of these symbols. So without further ado, we're gonna get right to that. Okay, on this slide, you can see the opening of the passage chamber structure at Newgrange. So you see here down at the bottom of the slide, the central curbstone is covered with a series of strange inscriptions. And I will go ahead and describe these kind of individually. And in subsequent slides, I'll have a further explanation of exactly what these symbols mean. So let's just take a look at this curbstone. So down here at the bottom, you see some wavy undulating lines at the bottom of the stone. There are also these kind of square or diamond shaped symbols. You see here on the right side of the stone, there's a few diamonds here on the right. And here on the left side of the stone, you see three diamonds on the left. You have this large triple spiral symbol here on the left side of the stone. And then another series of spirals moving from right to left from the right side of the stone. So again, that gives you a bit of an introduction to these unusual glyphs that cover the curbstone. And I will get into explaining exactly what these mean here in just a moment. All right, I really love this drawing of the Newgrange curbstone because you can very clearly see all of the symbols indicated. So just again, to quickly refresh, you have some undulating wavy lines here at the bottom of the stone. On the right side, you see these diamond or square shaped glyphs here. You also have a series of symbols moving from right to left across the stone. On the left side of the stone, you have this large triple spiral symbol. And again, here on the far left, you see this series of square or diamond shaped symbols. Now, I cannot take credit for this image. I wish I remembered where I found this. Again, um, I would quote the source if I had it, but I really like this. I'm gonna be using it in the subsequent slides, but again, this is not my picture. So uh, credit to whoever actually drew and painted this thing. It's a really beautiful representation of this stone. All right, so what do the symbols that cover the central curved stone of Newgrange actually mean? Well, when you visit the site, the tour guides at the location will straight up tell you that they have absolutely no idea what these symbols actually mean. And they will give you a rather unscientific interpretation of these glyphs, which is connected to being either some sort of primitive art or magic symbols. Well, you and I both know from our previous discussions that ancient magic was indeed chemistry. So to the uninitiated, these strange carvings would have appeared to be primitive art or magic symbols, but Aquari now knew that the magic of the order of chem was chemistry. He had seen similar glyphs before during his apprenticeship and understood them to be representations of chemical compounds. So in the final chapter of the land of chem, Aquari, after receiving the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids, returns home to Ireland and applies the knowledge that he has received through these degrees 
to discovering the long lost purpose of the ancient passage chamber mounds of Ireland. So again, he now knows that ancient magic is indeed chemistry and immediately recognizes that the symbols covering this herb stone are not art, but they are rather indications of how this structure functioned. All right, in the next couple of slides, I will just provide a brief introduction to the internal configuration of the New Grange Mound. So compared to the Egyptian pyramids, these are very, very simple structures in terms of their configuration. Really, you only have three main components of this structure. There is a long passageway leading into the main structure. In the center, you have a large vaulted central chamber, and you have three smaller chambers that flank the central vaulted chamber. And I'll show another image of that here on the next slide. So again, you see this long passageway leading into the structure itself. And then inside the structure, you have this large central vaulted chamber, the three smaller chambers. And inside each one of these smaller chambers, there is a stone basin. So these stone basins are actually carved from granite. And in a much later video, I will be discussing the construction materials that were utilized in these structures. Again, most of these things are constructed from limestone and you also see some granite utilized in there. Well, that is also very similar to what was utilized in the construction of the Egyptian pyramids. And there is indeed a connection in the purpose for those construction materials, but we'll get to that in a much later video. Stay tuned. So now that we have a thorough understanding of the internal configuration of the New Grange passage chamber system, we can now begin to evaluate these symbols in relation to the operation of the structure. So again, we have these undulating lines here at the bottom of the stone. You have these series of spirals moving from left to right. You have a large triple spiral symbol here on the left. You have your square or diamond shaped symbols here on the far left. And on the far right, you also see those square or diamond shaped symbols repeated. So what is the meaning behind these mysterious glyphs? Well, the undulating lines at the bottom of the stone represent water. So as with the Egyptian pyramids, the ancient passage chamber structures of Ireland also utilized water as a mechanism of operation within the structure. And the water was utilized to facilitate the chemical reactions that were occurring inside the chambers. So again, the undulating lines at the bottom of the stone, those represent water filling the passage chamber system. Now, the second symbol that we spoke about are the series of spirals that move from right to left across the stone. Well, this series of spirals represent air flowing into the passage chamber system. So with this triple spiral symbol here on the left, this represents the moist airflow that is circulating inside that large central vaulted chamber. So recall that we have a triple chamber system. That large central chamber was flanked by three smaller chambers around the outside. So again, this large triple spiral symbol represents the moist airflow circulating inside that triple chamber system. Now here on the far left, you have your reactants that are placed within the stone basins inside the structure. And I will not say what the min mineral is that was utilized as the initial reactant, but this is your initial reactant here inside of the chamber prior to the reaction sequence. And here on the far left, this is actually your product that has been created within the structure being removed from the production cycle for collection. And again, I won't say what this mineral is here on the left or what this final product is here on the right, but again, I hope you can begin to see that this curbstone is communicating instructions for the operation of the structure and it is sitting right out in front. So let's take this information a step further and apply what we just learned about the symbols of the New Grange curbstone. And again, let's apply them to the internal configuration of the structure. So again, here in the background, you can see the internal configuration of the New Grange passage chamber system. 
Here at the bottom, you will see the undulating wavy lines, which represent the water moving into that passageway. Um, I will go into much further depth in a later video explaining exactly how this structure operated. But again, today we'll just give you a brief introduction to the interpretation of the symbols. So again, here at the curved stone, you see the undulating lines at the bottom of the stone. Well, this also represents the water filling in the passage chamber system. Again, you'll have that large triple spiral symbol, again, representing the moist airflow so circulating within this triple chamber system. Here on the left, you can actually see what your product looks like after the chemical conversion is complete, being located within those three stone basins. So again, let's recall that we have three stone basins inside the structure, and you have three square or diamond symbols, which again represent the initial reactant that is placed inside those three stone basins. And again, the large triple spiral symbol is indicating the moist airflow that is circulating within that triple chamber system. So there's a reason that they put these three symbols here on the left side of the curb stone because there's three chambers, there's three receptacles inside the chamber, and again, you have this moist air circulating within that ch triple chamber system. And here on the right, you'll see that repetition of this square or diamond symbol as your product is being removed from the system for collection. All right, and to summarize what we just learned, I'll go to another quote from the sixth degree. So a query studied the symbols closely as he attempted to decipher their meaning, assessing the arrangement and progression of the images while applying them to the internal configuration of the New Grange Mound. He began to realize that the curbstone was communicating instructions for the operation of the structure with inscriptions of a rudimentary equation for a chemical reaction sequence. So I hope you all can now see, and once these things are seen, they cannot be unseen, that sitting right out in front of this ancient passage chamber structure is literally a, an instruction template for exactly how this structure operated and a detailed explanation of the chemical reaction sequence that was occurring within the structure. So again, today we have chemical, balanced chemical equations that show all of the reactants and the series of reactions that produce the product. Well, that is exactly what you see here on the New Grange curbstone. This is a rudimentary chemical equation describing the chemical reaction sequence that occurred within this structure. So again, in future videos, I will be doing a much more in-depth explanation of exactly how this structure operated. But again, as I sit here and look at this picture and look at the stone, I cannot unsee these symbols as interpreted as chemical compounds. Again, the water filling the chamber at the bottom, these undulating lines, the spiral symbols representing the air circulating inside the chamber, your three reactants placed within the three bowls inside the chamber, and then your product being removed. Um, let's just say, long story short, that it is a water-soluble product. So again, this represents your product being removed from the structure. I won't say exactly how that was accomplished. Again, that can be reserved for those of you that would like to purchase and read the book. Uh, again, this is all contained within the final chapter of The Land of Chem. So again, so, of course, for those of you that are interested in purchasing the book, it is now available. Uh, those limited first edition print copies are now up at www.thelandofchem.com. If you'd like to visit the website today, you can pick up your copy. I really sincerely appreciate it. This book means the world to me, and um, I really, really hope you guys enjoy reading it. So thank you so much in advance. All right, so, so here we are at the end of the video. Thank you all so much for joining me again today. This has been episode seven, the symbols of the New Grange Curbstone. And in the very near future, I will be doing some in-depth explanation of how the structures operated. I'll do some other videos on some of the other passage uh, chamber structures. So it's not just New Grange. There's Low Crew, Four Knox, Noth, Douth, and then you have Carrow Keel and County Sligo on the western coast of Ireland. So there is a lot more coming in the future. Just stay tuned. Um, again, if you'd like to pick up your copy of the book, it is available at www.thelandofchem.com. 
And then of course, follow me on Instagram, keep up with all my pictures for my research expeditions and all that kind of stuff at the land of chem on IG. So thank you all so much for joining me again. And until next time, we'll see you.